So, I have thought about one of the most original ideas of all time. I think I'm the only one that's ever done this. I'm going to do a Premier League prediction video official. The official part is important. Please um, like and subscribe if you feel the originality after this video right now. Of course, as well, if I do say that your team will not like stay up, then don't kill me. Thanks. Well, of course, there's a comment. So, of course, discuss with each other down below in the comments. Let me know your, your, your bottom three, your top four, your dark horse, whatever you feel. But with that said, let's get into my official Premier League predictions. Now, I did do a video um, about my early predictions. There's a few of my predictions that has changed since then based on signing some different clubs. Actually, quite a few, actually, because, of course, that's why I said it's my early prediction because transfers does make a difference and it does wide open um, the possibility of what could happen in the season. If it's to do with the quality of play, squad depth, the list goes on. So don't worry, I'm not just repeating the same video. There's actually quite a bit of difference in this. So, so let's get into it. So of course I'm on team maker because I'm too lazy to do proper editing. Hey, you can't have a go at me for poor editing if I'm honest about it. I mean, I could spend about five hours doing, you know, amazing editing skills and make a table on Photoshop, but you guys don't really care about that. You just skip to whenever I show your team anyway. So there's no real point in doing it in the first place. It's just wasting my time and probably even your time. So it's just easy just to just throw teams on here, not gonna lie. So that said, let's get into my penalty prediction, my official, official, okay? It's, it's, it's so official. So I'm not gonna go from like bottom to top. I'm gonna go based on just random teams. So let's start off with a team which I feel like has had a fantastic transfer window and that team would be Everton. Everton in this window has brought in the likes of Iwobi from Arsenal, of course, Moise Keane from Juventus, uh, Gabamin from the Bundesliga. They've confirmed Andre Gomez as actual signing and of course, Fabian Delph for CDB. And they've brought in a lot of depth and quality depth as well. And of course, I rate Marco Silva as a manager and they already had a pretty, you know, solid team with the likes of Pitford in goal. They got the likes of Richardson and Sigurdsson in attack. Very good players all around. Sigurdsson as a cam roll, Iwobi and Richardson as the wings and a striker could be Moise Keane. Of course, Richardson can also play as a striker if that's and there's also like a Bernard in there as well which is a good player and even Phil Walker if you want to count him I guess they've got a very very good team they have sold it on a game but Kabamin is a decent replacement maybe not as good I mean he's not as experienced he could be a decent player to throw in the mix so Everton your play position so Everton has bought well in the transfer window let's do another team which has bought a lot of players in this window you already know who it is it's gonna be Aston Villa Aston Villa are put as a top 15 I feel like they've bought in uh, a lot of um, okay, decent players all around. They've not bought like one or two big players that you know will like instantly make a grand running. I think that a lot of their signings are, you know, the chances. You know, one or two is from Belgium, a few is from Turkey. Like, they've bought a lot of players in their team and it will be a chance to see if they can actually hit the ground running. There's also a big job for Dean, the manager, as well, to actually bring them all together and make them actually play as a team. You know, to drill them all together is quite hard when you've got so many different, you know, cultures of football and people, people from all over the place coming into one team but from what I've seen I feel like there's worse teams than Aston Villa so I feel like you know 15th 14th place spot is you know on the cards. People think that Aston Villa will do a Fulham but I feel like the issue with Fulham was the fact that they sacked their manager like before Christmas I believe so I feel like I think that's what shot them in the foot so as long as they hold on to the manager and they keep on to what he wants to do with the team I feel like they should be fine. Next up let's do a team for the escaping relegation zone and I feel like in that mix, it's going to be Newcastle. I put Newcastle in escaping relegation. Now, in my official video, I put um, Newcastle in a relegation zone. Since then, Newcastle has brought in players like St. Maximum, Andy Carroll, Willems, um, some Swedish guy from, I think, Sweden, I presume. I feel like they've brought in players well, and Andy Carroll could actually be a very good player if he's fit. He's 30 years old. He's not even that old. I feel like he can actually do a job at Newcastle, not glad, man. And also Jordan Turner, which they brought in, has done well in preseason. Steve Bruce, for me, is still a worry, um, but I feel like they may just have enough compared to the other teams. Of course, St. Maximum came from League 1. Will we do well in the Premier League? We can only find out. So where I put them as relegation zone, I think they'll be like a 16th place team this year, potentially. So I put Newcastle, who I thought would be down upwards. Let's put a team which I thought could be challenging for relegation downwards. And that would be Crystal Palace. I think if they're not careful, they could be severely, severely, like, screwed this season. Let me explain, because you may be thinking, wait, Palace, they they finished, like, 12th last year. They hear me out. Zaha, the main player, obviously, is still at Palace, right? Which I guess is good for them, but he's severely pissed off. Like, he's 
he's put in transfer requests, he wants, he's, he's refused to train, he, and I don't know what's gonna happen, it all depends on how it works, Zaha is the reason why they've stayed up, let's be honest, for the last year or two. Milivojevic is their top goal scorer, and I think that, like, he's got, like, 10, 11 goals or whatever, and most of them are for penalties because of Zaha or Townsend. They also had Batch right last year, which, of course, he's gone now back to Chelsea, and now the main strikers is Ben Teke, who scored one goal last season, Colin Wickham has scored no goals last season, and also Jordan Ayew, who scored one goal last season, so there's strikers, all three of the strikers which you have right now, the main three strikers, I've scored two goals last season. That they are also lacking a right back. They've only got Joel Warder because they saw Ramasaka and didn't replace him. But I feel like all around they are very, very weak. And from what I can tell from a CPFC hashtag on Twitter and um, from Palace fans, they're very worried. They're very worried from this season, man. I think scoring goals could be an issue for them unless they're strikers and actually start acting like strikers. So if you're a Palace fan watching this and you're saying, "Oh, I don't think you go down," and then you're not worried. I think you're lying. I think most Palace fans are very you're concerned about the situation right now. So, Palace, I think they could go down. Let's do an easy one. Let's do Tottenham. Tottenham, Champions League, I think it's pretty nailed on now. They brought in well with Andombele, Lo Celso, even Ryan Sasson as a decent left back option. Um, I think they've done well this summer. They kept on to their big plays. Eriksson was leaked out, you know, leaked to go. East Day, Harry Kane's still there. Son's still there. Dele Ayer's still there. Um, Lucas Moore's still there. They've still got a very strong team. Defence, out of the real world, Vertonghen, Davidson Sanchez. Very solid team. There's not much to really say over the fact that I don't think they win the league. I don't think they've got what it takes to win the league still. You never know if they're going to be second or third, but I don't think they win the league. So, Champions League spot for Top. Next up, let's do a let's do a West Ham West Ham top ten. Um, I feel like they have brought in well with Haller. I think Haller is a fantastic signing. I think he'll score at least you know like 14, 15 goals this year. I rate him a lot. He also brings in other players. So I feel like, like some you know Felipe Anderson will do well for him as well. Uh, but I feel like compared to Everton, I feel like. I feel like Everton's just got a bit more than them. Um, I also think that um, Marco Silva is a better manager than Pellegrini. So, I, I that's why I put Everton above West Ham. And I'm pretty sure looking back that I put Leicester as a Europe League spot. So, I might as well put them in here as well uh, while I'm talking about Leicester. And I'll be at Leicester. Of course, I think they'll be top 10. I don't think they'll also push into Europe League. The only question mark is like, you know, how would Chelsea do? And, you know, maybe even not, like United, they could do pretty poorly. But I still feel that, you know, they may have a bit more... Just. Of course, Leicester brought in Tillemans, Ayuso Perez, uh, Prayet as well from Belgium, which is uh, a bit inexperienced, that uh, Prayet. Uh, of course, but so Harry Maguire, which would that centre-back be you know, a miss? Would they miss Harry Maguire as a centre-back? Of course, they still got West Morgan, Danny Evans, I think, some Tur Turkish lad as well. I also do like Brendan Rodgers. I think that he could be a bit better manager as a Marco Silva, but... I think that Everton's got a bit more strong of a team than Leicester right now, especially attacking-wise. So I'll put Leicester in the top 10. Let's do a top 15 team. Now I'll put in Bournemouth. I think that they've... They're Bournemouth. They've got good creative players all around. There's not much else really to say. I like Idia. I think he's a good manager. They're a very on and off team. Runs here and there. They have bad runs here and there. You can always expect them to get like one big result at home against like a top 6 team. You know, Harry Wilson with Kellen Wilson with... Josh King with Fraser with Brooks. I feel like as an attack, I think they're very solid. Yeah, I put them top 15, like always. Also in top 15, Southampton. I think that they've done well um, with the signings. From what I've seen, I think they're a good team. Cheer Adams, I think, will be a class signing for them. People people think Southampton may do poorly, but I think that's because of how poor they started. Because of, um, was, it, was it Hughes? Was it Hughes the manager beforehand? He, he's terrible. Their defence can still be a bit... If we here and there, I'll be honest. I don't rate it that much, so I think if they will come anywhere, I'll say 15th maybe. Let's do a relegated team, and I think for me, I'll put... Oh, it's a tough one, man. I think I've got to put in Norwich. Um, I like Norwich. I like um, talking Norwich City, Jack Reeve, I mix with him. Um, I like. I don't mind Norwich as a team. You know, I think they play good football. I just feel like defensively, they are very poor. Of course, they won the league last year. Everything went right from last year. I think they won like 22 points, something mad like that, from a losing position. So they, they concede first a lot. So I feel like in the Premier League, I don't think that they can do that that much. That's a very good start, but that's in the Championship. The Premier League is a different beast. And I don't think, let's say if you go 1-0 down, I don't think they can claim that many points back um, compared to the Championship. So for that alone... I think the defence is very poor and I think that that'd be their main downfall. Similar to like a Fulham, they went down because their attack was somewhat decent and then they feel somewhat okay, but their defence was very, very weak and that's why they got sent down. And I think for now it should be a similar kind of story. I don't, I feel bad because I feel like everyone writes them off you because 
Typically, they've got bad history of Premier League. They usually go down. They've, of course, got some good your young players already in the team with your Matt, Sha Matt Sarans, Godfrey. They are, of course, inexperienced, so it's all brand new to them. And, of course, experience is important in the Premier League, which I feel like they lack a lot. Let's do a big team and let's put in, let, let's say, let's say Arsenal. Let's say Arsenal, right? I think Arsenal is going to be in the Champions League this year. I think they'll claim that fourth spot. A better manager than your... Man United or Chelsea. Emery versus Lampard and Solskjaer, I think it's pretty obvious. Lampard is, of course, in experience and Solskjaer, I just don't think he has what it takes. Um, of course, they brought in, I think Arsenal has had the best transfer window by far. Pepe, um, which they probably they probably didn't even need a winger, but they sold a Warby for 40 mil and got Pepe for 60. That's good business, not like for, I think is a better player, much better player than a Warby Pepe is. You know, Cabellos in midfield, a good a good you know, midfield option. Kirantini is a massive coup for Arsenal. I think he'll be the left back for years to come and do a fantastic job. David Luiz will bring some some leadership qualities to the defence. Of course, people may clown him, but he's won many Premier Leagues. He's won Champions Leagues. He's won um, FA Cups. He's won. He wins trophies. He wins trophies, and I feel like that kind of quality that because you know he was class when Chelsea won the league with Antonio Kante. So yeah, Arsenal. I think they've smashed the window, and I think fourth place, if they don't get it, is a massive, massive failure. So, fourth place, Arsenal. So, of course, as we're on about Arsenal, and I think they've top four, might as well put in United as well as a fifth place. Um, I think they've got an all-round decent team. They've got a centre-back and a right-back, which is very important. Is Maguire that good? He's better than what they have, but I don't think he's insane. It would do a better job than what they've got and I think that's kind of what matters. Wamasaki is a class setting in my opinion and also uh, James, I think he can be a good you know, player off the bench sometimes, you know, but I don't think he's ready right now for Premier League. There's no way in hell he is. It's a big year for Rashford and Martial to really like, you know, come to their own kind of you know, beast right now. They can be really, really good together and form a partnership and then get to top four. That could happen quite well, but they could also be inconsistent like what they usually are and then still come fifth or sixth place. Other than Pogba in the midfield, it's Matic, which is, you know, downgrading now. Let's be real here, guys. Fred, um, Andreas Pereira. I just feel like they're a bit weak there uh, for Manchester United kind of standard. So I think you League spot this year. Could be on hand again, but you never know. They could win the Europa League and then also, you know, go through Champions League that way. You never know. That could be possible. So, still have a chance of winning the Europa League, Yasser fans. So, good luck in that. And Chelsea, people may think that they will maybe drop down to like an eighth place team, meaning that like maybe like a Leicester could be in Europa League spot and Chelsea could be down there. If you're a Chelsea fan, then you will see this year as like a buy season. Um, the strikes right now is your Giroud, Tammy Abraham, and Batshu Rai. There's no real like standard quality of striker they have which you know get like 15 goals a year but that could be the reason why people may think they do poorly Pulisic in his periods William <laughs> Chelsea fans hate it Hudson Odoi is enjoying now but he could come good in the year Chelsea has lost David Luiz that means that means uh, that means the centre backs is Christiansen, Zuma um, and Rudiger but if their young players do not thrive they could seriously be in the, the like eighth, ninth place this year, and I'm, and it's not too unlike Chelsea to see them you know slip down to like eighth, ninth place. So yeah, Chelsea, I put them as like a seventh place. I think Everton could be above them. Not gonna lie. Next up, let's do Wolves. Wolves top ten. Um, people may think they'll be seventh place this year. I don't think they will. Um, mainly because I think they're a good team. I think they'll qualify to group stages of Europa League, and I think that Europa League will harm them in the league as well. Maybe get a few draws here and there, which they may get a win in previous week in, in a previous season. The Europa League curse is a thing. I as a bird only fan I've seen it you know face to face and like I know that how you don't think it's a big thing but it is a big thing it does affect your players fitness wise it really does so Wolves I put them top top foot as well top 15 I think that they've done okay in the summer you know brought in a few players here and there nothing massive but they've not lost anyone big so a, a decent window I'll say I can't really see them being much better this year than what they were last year Dean is by far still the main striker Andre Gay can be okay here and there so I'll say top 50 for Watford now it's time for the relegation zone out of Brighton Sheffield United or Burnley who do I think will be the last team that goes down now I put in Brighton I think they'll go down and I thought Sheffield United will stay up uh, based on my last video now Based on Brighton signings of Aaron Moy and also Mopai since my video, I think Aaron Moy is a very good signing. I think he will be a very big coup for them. So, because of that, I'm going to put Brighton to stay up and Sheffield United to go down. I 
I have faith in Sheffield. I've always said that I feel like they'll stay up, but they've not brought in anyone which I feel like has got any experience in the Premier League other than Phil Jagielk, and he's like 35, I think. As a Burnley fan, I always believe that, you know, having a your strong world, work ethic, um, resolute side, like Burnley, that I feel like that is more important than having your, the, your amazing quality. Like Burnley's players are not like insane players. We, we don't have any insane quality players. Let's be real here, guys. Other than like maybe two or three. But we work hard and we are strong in the system. And I think that's what keeps us up. Sheffield United brought in Mike Burnley from Swansea, which should be a decent player. Uh, but again, that's in the championship. Uh, Vid just scored 25 goals in championship and then he came to Burnley and scored like two goals. Just because they do well in championship does not mean they do well in Premier League. I just feel like they could be quite poor in terms of their attack. I feel like defensively they could be decent because that's their main that's their main part of their team. They had the most clean sheets last year in championship um, and that was their main kind of thing. They need Billy Sharp to be incredible this year. If he's not incredible, if he doesn't pull the strings, if he doesn't start off well, get a goal early, then I think they will struggle. So, I'm sorry Sheffield. I've, I've rated you guys. I've had faith in you guys, but I was hoping to get like one one more big player in a tackle as a winger to help you guys. That didn't happen. So for that reason alone, I can't see them staying up, man. So Sheffield United, I think we'll go down. And that means I think Burnley being top 15. Um, I don't think we'll be like that deep in a relegation battle. M maybe here and there. But Depth-wise in our team, we've got very good depth all around. Um, you know, left back, right back, wingers, centre mids. You know, Danny Drinkwater now on loan, a Premier League winner. I think he can still do a very good job. It, so Burnley, I think, top 15 or, you know, maybe escaping relegation. I think, you know, in between that. We've got two strikers in Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes, who's got 42 goals combined in the last two seasons Premier League football. Um, so I don't think there's any issues. We've got two 10 goals as season strikers in our team, and that keeps you up. And we've also got a good defence. Well, like, last year, the second half of the year, last year, after we got not you played, after that pot went, we came eighth place. If you counted the last 19 games, if you're going to exclude our poor starts because of Europa League. So I don't think there's any real issues. Maybe top 10, you never know. But I don't think there's any real issues with Burnley. And I know, I know, I know I'm a Burnley fan, but I don't think many people really think we'll go down. Um, so top 15. That's what I think. And now it's Liverpool and Manchester City. I think this is quite easy, not going to lie. Uh, Liverpool, has, they've, not, they've not brought in anyone. They brought Adrian. That's a bigger signing. Um, Klopp, of course, has faith in his players, which I think is very, you know, is very admirable. And main 11 to main 11 for both teams, for Liverpool and City, is very good. Very similar. And any team can win on their day. I think Liverpool can beat City. I think City can beat Liverpool. And I think if they're playing against each other like 10 times, I think it'd be like 5-5. Five, five. But as a depth for an entire season, I think that City is just exceeding Liverpool. So for that, I'll put City to win the league again. For example, um, as a winger, City, if you know, they got uh, as a right winger, Raheem Sterling. If he gets injured, they can then use a your know, Phil Forden or a um, Riyad Mahrez. For Liverpool, as a right winger, for example, if Salah gets injured or is suspended and they've got Shakiri to be in that kind of role, the depth between Shakiri and a Riyad Mahrez or as a Bernardo Silva or as a Sane or as a De Bruyne or as a, or as a, or as a David Silva is quite mad because City can rotate their front four and it's still world class. Of course, City helped themselves with Cancelo, which didn't even need a right back. Their right back was only Kyle Walker and they brought in a better right back, which is insane. Unless if something drastic happens, like something really drastic in defence happens, I think City will win the league again. And guys, that is my Premier League predictions. Let me know your thoughts. It's changed a bit, especially when it comes to, you know, who I think is going down. Uh, it's changed a lot. My top four thought he's still the same. Um, I thought Leicester will be in your league. Now I think it's Everton. But yeah, this will be my final confirmed prediction from now on. I think it'll be very interesting to see maybe Brighton and Palace, who, who are both your know, rivals in theory, I guess, um, fighting out. I think those two will be you know, fighting out near the end of the season. I think um, I'm looking forward to that, to be fair. But yeah, that is my prediction. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. It's Bat Baby. So thank you guys for watching. My name is Vizan. I'll see you next time. <laughs>